Hi, everyone. I'm Lisa Natoli, and I am thrilled to be here today with one of my very favorite people on the planet, James Twyman. Welcome, Jimmy. The feeling is mutual, for sure. And it's great to be here, Lisa, especially with you. Oh, my God. And I am especially excited because we're here to talk today about your session from the Awareness Conference, which is this weekend. Starts Friday morning, goes all day Friday, all day Saturday, all day Sunday. It's totally free. It's online. It's live. It's interactive. And James Twyman's session is on Friday. He's going to be part of a panelist at 12 o'clock Eastern on Friday. And then his session is 1 o'clock Eastern on Friday. And I just went and got your description to get ready for this little talk. And I'm so excited by what you're going to bring. And I'm just going to read it because I think you, the, the session is called The Power of I Am Awareness. And what you ask is a question that I think is so important is what would happen if you became aware of your full I am presence? So this session is, um, James wrote a book in 2008 called The Moses Code. And in that book, he revealed the code that had been hidden for 3,500 years, 3,500, uh, why so many centuries? And let's see, I'm just gonna read here. Why was it hidden for so many centuries? Simply because religious authorities decided that it was too powerful to be wielded by the average person. In other words, becoming aware of our I am presence was a risky proposition, at least from a religious perspective. Right. But spiritually, it's exactly what we need. What would happen if you became aware of your full I am presence? How would it change your life in the world? In this discussion, James Twyman will reveal how you can use this ancient technology to unlock the power of your own inner whole self. So before I give it over to you to just tell us what your session is going to be about, for those of you who don't know James Twyman, he is a rock star. Like, you know, he has a professional bio, which is he's a New York Times bestselling author of many, many books. He's... Uh, peace troubadour. He's he's somebody who's devoted his entire life to peace, to love, to joy, to being this I am presence. And I happen to have the privilege to know James personally. And he is a visionary. He is one of the boldest people I know. He's in Mexico right now. He he listens very deeply within and trusts one hundred percent the promptings that come to him from within. And he just follows, like he, you just leap without a parachute. I've seen you do it so many times. You've gone Sometimes to- without a parachute. <laughs> with, with what? Sometimes leaping out without a parachute. <laughs> That's exactly what you do. So I'm, I'm super excited for your session and the space is all yours. Well, first of all, I'm really excited to be sharing at this conference with so many other incredible people you included and the work that bill and everyone else has done to put this together is inspiring and that's what we need today are inspired and inspiring people to step forward so that we can really feel the vibrancy of this message not in some lukewarm intellectual way but to really feel it and experience it at the deepest level. So I'm really excited to be part of it and to share a little bit about the Moses Code and the power of I am consciousness. I want to go back to where that all started with me and tell a little story. I remember, gosh, I don't even know what year it was now, but I was watching a movie that people were talking about a lot. And I watched the movie and I had two thoughts. Number one, it's a very good film. A lot of people are going to see it. And number two, this movie has, I think it's gonna create some issues. And the movie was The Secret. And The Secret, as you probably know, is all about how do you use spiritual law to get what you want or to get what you don't have, thinking somehow your life is gonna be better if you could only get 
those things or more money, a better relationship, a better car, whatever it may be. It was all about getting. And I realized that this may be an important first step so that we can realize just how powerful our thoughts and our being is. But I also realized that there is another much more important step right after this. You see, I, I call that the, what the secret proposed as the ego's law of attraction. And there's also the soul's law of attraction, which has a mantra. Both of them have a mantra, actually. The mantra of the ego is I want. The mantra of the soul is I am. In other words, whatever it is I am wanting to claim in my life, I have to become that. I have to realize that it's already within me and I need to I am it into my experience. Now, this story goes all the way back to, to Moses 3,500 years ago, as you mentioned, and what happened to him at the burning bush when he was being asked by God to do what seems incredible, impossible, to go to the most powerful man in the world and demand that he release all of the Israelite slaves. And Moses finally said, who shall I say sent me? And in Hebrew, God says, Ahie, Asher, Ahie, I am that I am. Now we're going to go into the code, which is found within that name on Friday. I don't want to give too much away. Only to say that Mo Moses and all of the other uh, Israelite authorities realized just how powerful that code was when it was activated in a certain way to the point that, as you mentioned, it became blasphemous, illegal. If you had, if you used it in a certain way, you could be stoned to death. In fact, many people were. But every once in a while, someone would come along that would not only say the words, but would claim them. And chief among them was Jesus, who would often say, I am the light of the world. I am the way, the truth, and the life. And in some cases, for example, when he was at the temple and, and he said he could tear it down and rebuild it in three days, and they asked, how is that possible? He said, before Moses was, I am. In other words, Jesus was saying, I am the divine. The divine is full and whole within me. And they picked up stones to kill him because this was blasphemy. But Jesus knew this at the deepest part of his being, and we are called to know this at the deepest part of our being. This is the time. There is no other time but right now, and this is the moment that, that we are being called to realize this I am presence within us. So this is what I'm going to be sharing during our talk, our sharing on Friday. I'll go much deeper into it and, and show how we can use the code not only to make our lives better, but to actually shift everything in our experience and in the whole world. And this is not just an airy-fairy sort of idea. This is the most concrete, ancient technology I've ever come across, and it works. I'll give examples of, of how it's worked amazing in my life and the lives of other people. Uh, and the Moses Code is... is is beginning a resurgence right now. It's going to be re-released um, in a month or so, again, with an updated, revised version. Um, sorry, I'm, I'm Hi, puppy. A, a German Shepherd puppy right now, who's very rambunctious. Anyway, I'm super excited to be here for this conference, super excited to be here with you, Lisa, one of my dearest friends. And, and we, have, we have people on um, Facebook. I want to say hello to everyone. And if you can please share this, um, this link, just to, it really is very important what, that people really are out there praying right now. There's so many people that are lost, confused, suffering, struggling, you know, and when we share these things, these messages, when we just kind of put it out there that there is a solution somebody can come to the conference this weekend it's totally free and and they can come hear something that will be life-changing and um I, I didn't realize that the moses code was based on you watching that movie the secret and i don't know if you knew this that Rhonda burns has published a new book called the greatest secret have you heard about it no i have not 
she uh, is amazing. So she basically says the book is based on Rupert Spira, Francis Lucille, um, all these non-duality teachers. And she actually admits in this book that the secret that a lot went wrong after that book got published. She went yeah. through hell, hell and back. And I, I never liked that book. But when I saw this new book, I was like, the whole world is getting on board with this I am present. So the greatest secret is what you're expressing. Yeah. Well, I'll, and I'll tell you one more story to kind of follow up on that. Um, when we were writing the book, when I was writing the book, we also were producing a movie that many people saw. Uh, called the Moses Code. And mm -hmm. I was working with some amazing people. We interviewed everybody, including many of the people that were in the movie, The Secret. And when it was all finished, after having worked on it for about a year, I was with my dear friend, Debbie Ford, and a couple of other guys who were filmmakers in Los Angeles. Uh, we were like maybe a month away from the movie's release. We already had hundreds of venues that were going to be showing it. And I showed it to them just so they could see it for the first time, expecting that they would say, oh, this is fantastic. This is such a great movie. And when it was done, they said, it's OK. Yeah, oh, that's not the answer I'm looking for. I, don't, I need it to be better than OK. And one of these guys uh, said, you know what, it, it's OK, but it could be great. And I don't have anything going for the next two weeks. And if you want, you and I can work day and night on this for two weeks. And I know we can pull together a truly great film. And we did. We worked for two weeks straight, almost 24 hours a day. And we ended up reshooting 70 percent of the film. We re-edited 100 percent of the film. Re uh, we rescored 100%. And by the time we were finished, it really truly was a great film. Mm -hmm. And the interesting thing is, is that the man who did that with me, his name is Drew Harriet, and he was the director of The Secret. <laughs> so it's funny how that all came around, how the whole thing started with me looking at that book and that movie thinking th th there needs to be another step here, a step into the soul. And the, the person I took that step with was the director of The Secret. That's so awesome. Well, it's also too, like, I think some of these messages are just way ahead of their time. And so, you know, it's, it's that idea, like at, at first truth is, is ridiculed and rejected, and then it's embraced. And so um, we have some comments here on the board. Um, Dion says, great message, I am versus I want, Lenora. Gives a big uh, gives a big shout out for you. Says this man is a modern day spiritual leader worth reading about. That's James Twyman. Um, so yeah, it's just I know you for so long, and you are the living, walking, breathing, talking example of I am. And I I feel like one of really like the shift that's happening that I'm occur that I'm seeing occurring is being this I am presence while we're in bodies yeah can you talk about that a little bit because I think well, people just think it's something else but it's this yeah. no you know our bodies are the vehicle through which we experience and express this message and we may say, I am not a body, and that is true. The truth of who I am, my I am presence, is not limited to a body. But we do find ourselves in these vehicles, uh, which are communication devices, and we are called to communicate this message. And the only way that we can do that is by using every part of us and taking care of every part of us. People sometimes say, if I'm not a body, I don't need to do anything. And the truth is, I have to do so much. And yes, yeah, so I think this is a very important message to embody this energy. Yeah, absolutely. Give all my love to everyone down there. Yeah, people are knocking on my door while I'm doing this. I've got a dog barking, so I, I, I mute myself every once in a while to tell them I'm busy. <laughs> but to me, what I love about that, what's happened, like today I decided to wear my sweater. For, I was thinking about, okay, I'm going on with James Twyman, and I was thinking about that question that you put in here. Like, 
It's such a good question. What would happen if you became aware of your full I am presence? How would it change your life in the world? And yeah. the answer for me is I would just show up myself. Like I show up with a sweater from the 1980s and I show up just, you know, like this, like I don't, you don't have to do anything different. Yeah. And that's what I love is like, you got the dog barking there. You've got life going on. It's not like you have to go different place to go find peace. It's right where you are. Yeah. Just to show up, as you said, show up exactly as I am. And it's interesting in your daily life, if you pay attention to how many times during the day you say the words I am and literally use the power of the name of God to manifest usually what you are not. Yeah. I am fat. I am broke. I am all these things that we literally claim using the power of that name. What if we were to manifest consciously by saying i am holy i am whole i am complete i am blessed and watch everything change in our life it, it it's like a miracle i i've seen so many miracles happen through this process and i'm looking so forward to sharing it much more deeply in my talk on friday but um, this is a great little introduction just to get people excited about it yeah. and for them to know that they don't need any special qualifications to do it because they're already doing it. They just need to become conscious that they are doing it and how they can actually lift it to a higher level to manifest the truth of who they are. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming on. And for everyone here who's watching, there is a link right here in the comments. I ask you to click it right now. You know, often we think I'm going to do this. I, I want to be part of this. And then life just gets in the way. So click the link. It's totally free. If you want the recordings and all the bonuses and the gifts, there's an all access pass. It is going to be an absolute party. James Twyman is on Friday, 12 o'clock p.m. Eastern. He's part of the panel. And then his talk is 1 o'clock Eastern this coming Friday. And we'll see you there. I love you. Thank you we'll so see much. See you guys there. Thank you, Lisa. This was fun.